You are not the hunter here. You are the hunted. You ain't in Bolivia anymore. Those rules don't apply here. You can't just shrug off bullets and run your way to safety. You're gonna have to survive. You're gonna have to lone survivor this shit. Before we get started, I'd like to give a huge thanks to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video and inviting me to see the private reveal of Ghost Recon Breakpoint. I played it firsthand and had the opportunity to talk with the developers and ask them a lot of questions. And uh, we got a lot of information. We got a ton of information. Some of these gameplay features are very unexpected. I was really surprised. I'm very pleased. I'm very excited. There's a lot I'm going to talk about, but I'm also going to have no commentary gameplay in this video as well, so you can appreciate the beautiful sound design. Go, go. But first, I'm going to talk about the interesting gameplay features like the injury system, the survival system, terrain and movement realism, aka how I'm going to injure myself, tactical mud camo, carrying allies to safety, yeah, it's not just a cool cover, it's a feature. Breach kits, classes, drones, and more. It's a multiplayer open world spec ops survival sandbox. The release is October 2019 and the gameplay you're seeing is alpha pre-release. So it's still a work in progress and this is not the final build. This is everything you need to know about Ghost Recon Breakpoint. At least until I get more info at E3. While I enjoyed Wildlands, it was important to me that this isn't just a better version of Wildlands. The developers said this game's development was influenced directly by the community, and it feels like it was. This time around, there's a focus on dynamic and unpredictable gameplay, with much of the difficulty stemming from adapting and managing the chaos that can arise from combat engagements. It feels like this could be a return to form for Ghost Recon, in that it embraces what it is to be a ghost, while also moving the series forward by taking what worked from Wildlands and expanding on it. Alright, let's get all the essentials out of the way. You can play the entire game's extensive PvE campaign in 4-player co-op, or you can play it solo. The game launches with PvP, post-launch content is free, it has 30 new vehicles, land, air, and sea. The handling is supposed to be a lot better, although I haven't been able to try it myself. John Barenthal is in it. And as for the open world, the game is set on Aurora, an archipelago in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It's a mysterious place with highly advanced buildings and an untamed wilderness diverse with fjords, deserts, swamps, beaches, jungles, and even volcanic areas. So, let's go over some really interesting gameplay features first, and then get into the open world, and then the story, and then the no commentary. In my opinion, the biggest impact on gameplay, solo or with friends, is the survival system. This is something that could really set this game apart as a spec ops sandbox shooter. Now, let me explain what that encompasses. As with many things in Breakpoint, the survival system influences and is influenced by many other features. Like injuries. You got a bunch of different injuries that can cause states like limping. You can't carelessly walk everywhere because terrain affects gameplay. Stumbling and injuring yourself before you start a mission would be pretty embarrassing. And there's some depth to them too. They are semi-permanent accumulating injuries and different injuries affect you in different ways. Through gameplay like your movement or aim and through stats like stamina and health. If you sustain a serious injury, you'll need to crawl to cover and pat yourself up. If you're playing with friends, this is huge because you can carry injured teammates to go patch them up. You can also load injured ghosts onto vehicles like helicopters if you don't have time to patch them in the field. With the ability to carry bodies, not only can you help allies, but you can hide hostile corpses, which is big for stealth. There's also a fatigue system, hunger, dehydration, sleep, all of those affect stats, and bivouacs. So, crafting and harvesting resources is a first for Ghost Recon. Normally, I don't care for crafting in open world games, but here, it's leveraged as a way to make use of the environment as an extra layer to survival, not for the purpose of adding a grind. Crafted items like bandages or rations can be transferred between players, which is another layer if you're playing with friends. Tying into all of these survival systems is the brand new Bivouac. This is another big innovation. Bivouac is a temporary camp that you can use to plan and prep for missions. You can change your class in camp, conduct weapons checks, mess around with attachments, craft various grades of medical supplies, or craft rations for boosts that can prepare you in different ways for the upcoming engagements by raising a particular stat. The camp also lets you choose how to manage your injuries. 
Since weather and light play such a vital role in mission approach and stealth, you can choose what hour you depart from the bivouac and you have access to weather forecasts and light data so you can prepare accordingly. I don't know if forecasts are 100% accurate, but it'd be funny if they weren't. During my hands-on with the game, I noticed that there's a new inertia to your movements. The developers explained that the movement and animation systems were overhauled to feel more natural and work more seamlessly with the new terrain and injury features. And it, it did add a weight to my movements that made things more believable while not sacrificing responsiveness. This was a huge change from movement in Wildlands, in my opinion, and I think it was an improvement. The animations just look fantastic. Very natural, very fluid. Speaking of which, we also have new CQC animations. Which are stunningly primal. For those of you wary of this being too punishing on the survival side of things, the developers said they aren't looking to go overboard with it. You won't be contracting malaria and covering yourself in tactical mud to camouflage yourself shouldn't jam your gun. I gathered that whatever difficulties or buffs these new features bring is linked to how it affects your play, rather than them being chores between you and the experience. I'm not sure exactly what this entails, but the developers told me, more realism is your choice. Saying, it's not forced, you can progress without it, and that you can use it as an extra layer. So it seems like some of these new gameplay features may not all be forced, especially depending on the difficulty levels. But I would not mind an ultra survival realism difficulty in the future, which just goes overkill. A great example of equipment and the larger focus on dynamic gameplay is the Breach Kit. I love this thing. The biggest foe in Wildlands was fencing. Now you can breach any fence and it's a permanent breach point that any of your teammates can use. Dev said that these breach points won't raise suspicion with hostiles. Which makes me wonder if hostile patrols will find vehicles you abandoned suspicious. Also new to Ghost Recon is the class system. You can change it to the bivouac so it's not a permanent choice, but classes offer special abilities and equipment, even special ammo variants such as sniper bullets that have increased range or accuracy. You've got classes you'd expect like Assault or Sharpshooter, but there's also Panther, which is centered on stealth. Those aren't all the classes in the game, and there will be more classes added in post-launch. There are over 30 new vehicles, on-road, off-road, water, and air, many being armed military vehicles. Handling is said to be greatly improved. They said greatly twice, so I have high hopes there. They also addressed helicopters in particular as being far better than before, so that's nice. There are more weapons to be found across the map than wildlands, and weapon and equipment can be looted anywhere, not only from fixed points and also can be looted off of enemies. Speaking of enemies, there's a slew of new enemy archetypes, including the AIM drone, which has cannons that can target independently, which makes strategizing their takedown with your friends less straightforward. And that's one of the reasons why they introduced drones, because of how incredibly different they are to play against than humans. Opens up a lot of different gameplay opportunities. The stronger they get, the more difficult they are through gameplay patterns implemented. And of course, you've got your garden variety of enemy soldiers and guards. Then you've got the Wolves, a lethal ex-US military unit gone rogue. The Wolves used to be you. They have the same training, the same expertise as you have, and they've seized the archipelago of Aurora, taking control of the most important resources of the island, the drones. They're led by your former brother-in-arms, Colonel Cole D. Walker. So you have no choice but to confront your former teammate. More on that in a second. Overall, they said there's far more archetypes than in Wildlands. This is another big change. Leveling is back, but with shared progress across PvE and PvP. So, whether you're playing solo or co-op in the open world, or engaging in PvP, it's all synergized. You always keep your level, your character, and their skills, and their weapons, and their customization. So no matter what you're playing, where you are, you're leveling you. Post-launch content is free, and it's going to include things like an expanded endgame, expanded story, events like you saw in Wildlands, raids, and more. And yes, raids. They're brand new to Ghost Recon, they're co-op only. I wasn't able to play them, but they're supposed to be very difficult and highly replayable. I did see them, and they did look pretty friggin' sweet. The location, what you were fighting, I'm excited for that. And if you don't have any friends, you can play campaign solo. And in solo, you can sync shot up to four hostiles with your drone. We don't yet know exactly how large this game's map is in comparison to Wildlands, but it's at least as large a playable area, if not larger. 
But what matters to me is that they're doing more with it. You can't just run anywhere without being careful. Terrain now has a direct impact on gameplay, which makes vehicles more useful outside of speed. Graphics, the lighting system in particular, have seen an immense improvement. Foliage scaling is more naturally realized as well. There's mud deformation. Weather majorly affects visibility. Naturally, enemies don't just rely on sight, but sound as well, so you'll need to cut engines shy of any hostiles to remain in stealth when in a vehicle. Colonel Cole D. Walker, who was first introduced a little over a week ago in a free update to Ghost Recon Wildlands, or you could fight alongside him, is the main antagonist of this game, which I think they've done a delightful job revealing in the trailer for those that played his mission in Wildlands. He was a ghost, a brother, someone you served with. There's flashback cutscenes that fill in some of your history together, which I felt was a nice way of adding depth to the character. John Berenthal is an excellent choice. He's got the charisma to carry a nemesis role like this well. But back to the overall story. Scale Technology, a bleeding-edge Silicon Valley giant, has seemingly gone dark and fallen into the wrong hands. On what was originally a normal recon mission, your heli is shot down. There's no briefing, nothing to rely on. The planning, the intel, the people on the ground you had in Bolivia are resources you don't have here. It's the perfect sandbox for a ghost recon tactics meets military survival skills. The campaign is supposed to be a deeper main story with hours of cutscenes, and you now have dialogue mission choices which add light role-playing elements but don't affect mission outcomes. That is all done by gameplay. Since this is a stuck-behind-enemy-lines story, you won't be handed every mission. You'll have to compile your own target packages to get some missions. You are your own handler. We're not in Bolivia anymore. The enemies you face aren't cocaine cowboys or corrupt Bolivian military, but an ex-ghost and his wolves in control of scale drones. You aren't the hunter here. Important distinction. Rogue spec op agents are. Additionally, there are various factions, like Skellers, Homesteaders, and Outcasts, that will impact your mission. I don't have any further details on those yet. But there are civilians as well, and their settlements may contain enemies. Aurora is a bit of a police state. Civvies can even decide to alert enemies to your presence as well. Ubisoft hired a Green Beret Special Forces veteran who served for 14 years all over the world as a technical advisor, so hopefully there's going to be touches of authenticity throughout. Now, we didn't get a chance to explore the world, but the slice of Aurora that we played was pretty promising. Wilderness was a great improvement. Interiors felt realistically scaled. They didn't feel cramped or clunky when engaging in doors. And there's also a decent amount of clutter to the interiors that give them a lived-in feel. <laughs> I could even see a heat sink and sticks of RAM through the window on a PC case. Some people thought that Wildlands was too fast and too simple a gameplay loop for Ghost Recon. And honestly, it feels like the developers have heard that community feedback and developed this game accordingly. All the gameplay elements feel unified this time around because it's all in service of the overall experience. Such as their realistic terrain model which changes more than you might think. It gives a usefulness to vehicles that wasn't there before. Between difficult to navigate terrain and the potential for injury on foot, there's more reasons to use vehicles now than ever before. And you have to consider your surroundings not just for cover or line of sight, but that you may not be able to move over terrain quickly enough to avoid being spotted. These core elements are changes that affect a great many things. This game is a big effort. There's more than a thousand developers on the Breakpoint team, and after more than 19 updates in two years for Wildlands, I've got a lot of faith that they're going to make this a great Spec Ops sandbox. Once again, major thanks to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video and letting me talk to the developers. Check out the link in the description for more details on the game, and subscribe for more juicy intel at E3. Ghost 1-1, one, one, this is Ghost Lee. I'm two mics at your location, but a guy, something bad's on my ass. Rally on me to eliminate the threat. Copy, Ghost Lee. I'm on route to Rappi. Time now. Ugh. 
on you, Ghost Lead. Copy. I see you. You got three bad guys closing from the rear. <sighs> Nothing to report. I'm gonna continue my search. Reconning for location. You have hostile to my right. Copy. On target. I'm bringing the fight to you! Be ready! Get set, guys! Good cover. Bravo team will set a diversion at the gate. Me and 1-1 one -one will fill the camp through the rear. Copy. Here either. Nothing ever happens around here.
Coast lead. We're set. Have you covered? 